Hello. Good morning, morning boys. Maybe it is good. Oh, that's it. Behind us, behind us, behind us. They're chasing Grupo. They've got Grupo, they've got him. Oh, they're killing him. Oh. Okay, stop, right? Stop, 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 stop. stop. Like much of the wildlife across the African continent, the African wild dog has been driven to the brink of extinction due to human activity. Because of the fenced farms across most of Namibia, the wild dog is not able to run free as they should, and therefore they're faced with the challenges of conflicting territories. We noticed three African wild dogs come into the dam. It was a male and two females. We could clearly see that the male had been previously injured. He's actually missing half a leg. It was clear that this pack of three had been separated from the others in its pack. And all of a sudden another pack came out of the bush and must have been chasing them. Check those dogs going into the water. It's not only other predators, but the wild dogs actually fight between themselves over territory, which makes it more tragic because they're killing each other rather than being directly killed by humans. Behind us, behind us, behind us! They're chasing Grimpa! Oh, they're killing him! Oh. Very old, my dog is very old. It was something that I've never seen before, something that happens naturally out in nature all the time. As much as I would want to go and stop the other wild dogs from singling out one of this highly threatened species, it, it is actually something that occurs here. If you interfere, that means that dog are going to be quite badly injured already and us humans are going to try and stitch him up, fix him. And if you fix him, in a month's time he's going to try and get, he, he wants your help again. And fortunately you can't help each and every animal in the reserve. Sometimes nature needs to take its course. But without any help at all, the African wild dog won't have a future. To combat the further loss of the species, Irindi is taking on the challenge of reintroducing them back into the wild, so that they at least have some chance. I'm just gonna feed these individuals, just here on their own, and then just to make sure, because they are extremely skinny, yeah. so then just to give them their boost, and then try to find the pack, because the pack would be separated now if the others are still alive. Yeah. They're probably lacquer hungry. There you go over there. But seeing that strong pack moving down and this pack moving up, it was highly um, expected for them to basically tear each other apart. It's their territory, basically. They know the area, they know. And they are excellent hunters, they're more independent, of course. Where these ones are newly released, they don't have the hunting cut down that much yet. Come, doggies, go! Keep, keep, keep! Normally they would switch. For the last two months they've been switching. When the North Pack is down here, the Perth Pack would be up at Costantia and they would switch. Oh no, it seems like their patterns just got a bit in between and they got a bit feisty with each other. The guides found them. So they went out to do the tracking. And then they did find a collar dog, the other alpha of that pack. But then unfortunately he was dead, he was already pulled apart. And now we can only assume there's nothing left of the other pack. Because the pack on top took everything over. Wow, okay. Because the other two are moving down They're on their own. There's nothing left of the There's nothing, that's what we assume, but we're not 100% sure. But it's highly unlikely for those two to start moving on their own without the adult dogs joining them and leading the way. Right. 
So now they're on their own, but we do have a bachelor pack of three males. They're out in the bush, they're lonely males. It'd be nice <laughs> to have some female company. Soon after learning the rest of their pack had been lost due to the attack by the other wild dogs, the conservation team stepped in to translocate the two remaining females across the reserve to introduce them to the smaller pack of males. While asleep, the females were given vitamins and fitted with tracking collars so their status could be monitored and they could be given another chance to survive out in the wild. A total of 74 dogs, we only lost 18 okay. in two months. It sounds like a lot, but in a big perspective, it's actually not that much at all. They're doing quite successful. Over the years that I've spent documenting the African wild dog, I've learned just how complicated the conservation of this species can be. Despite everything being against them, they continue to exhibit incredible resilience. At the same time of us documenting this story of the two females, on the other side of the reserve, there was a mother preparing to give birth to a new litter of pups. These young ones are what gives me hope for the future of the African wild dog. <laughs>